Hello, my name is Naoki Furusho. I'm in Waseda University. Presenting with me today is Wataru Suganami from Waseda University as well. We are here to talk about globalization in Asia, especially global competitiveness of Asia. So this is the agenda of our presentation today. Let's move on to the proposal. So what we think about is how to develop global competitiveness of Asia. We set the definition of Asia. Asia Public Private Partnership Institute defines Asia as 48 countries below. Right? West side of Asia, like Pakistan to east side of Asia, Japan. We came up with two questions. The first question is, what is the critical difference between Asian countries and other developed countries in terms of global competitiveness? So one of the possible answer is the range of the gender gap. Look at this chart. These countries are top 20 rankings in the gender gap. And as you can see, there's only one Asian country, Philippines. This is the bottom of the rankings. These countries are ranked in over 100, like Japan, India, Korea, Nepal, and Pakistan. So why are we talking about the gender gap? So look at this graph, which shows the relationship between the gender gap and the global competitiveness. So as you can see, there's a very strong correlation between them. So second question, what is the outcome if we could cross this gender gap in Asian countries? So one of the possible answer is enhancement of productivity and economic growth. Because women make a 50% of population, that's 50% of human capital available. This is the evidence. It shows <coughs> the relationship between the gender gap and GDP per capita. It also shows correlation between them. So let's move on to the issues. So what are the issues? Once again, it's absolutely the gender gap. Then, what are the specific issues on the gender gap? So, we offer four different kind of issues on the gender gap. The first one is child mortality. While unified mortality is increasingly concentrated in a few countries, about half of global under five deaths occur in five countries. India, Nigeria, Democratic Republic of Congo, Pakistan, and China. And there are three Asian countries out of five first countries. So next one is less access to education. This graph shows percentage of women enrollment in higher education institutions in select Pacific Asian countries. Bangladesh, Colombia, China, Japan, Singapore, South Korea, and Vietnam these 7 out of 10 countries shows less than 50% of women enrollment in higher education institutions. Next one is rest level force participation. We took up two of our countries, Japan and Korea, easily to compare. And we are still behind the world in terms of women labor participation. And the last one is low level of political decision making. Look at this chart. Nordic countries have the highest share of women in single or lower houses of parliament, averaging 42%. Europe, Africa, and Asia follow with around 19 to 20% of total sheets. We Asia have only 18.5% share of women in parliament. So once again, these were four different parts of gender gap. <clears throat> Hi, this is Wataru, and I'm going to tell you our solution and conclusion. So let's move on to our solution. 
One question. What would it take to close the gender gap in Asia? And here is our solution. Gender action program. And the first aspect, health. Second, education. Third, economy. And last one, politics. So let's look at the first aspect, health. We should improve healthcare delivery and a series of well-timed interventions to expectant mothers to reduce child mortality and improve maternal health. And one more, to countering sex selective abortions that led to fewer female births, the social value of girls must be enhanced. And the next one, education. We should identify gaps in gender equality through the use of gender analysis and sex disability dated data and raise awareness about gaps and build support for change through partnerships like advocacy and alliances, put adequate resources and the necessary expertise into place, monitor implementation, hold individuals and institutions accountable for results. Last and most important, higher education is the whole where future decision makers and policy makers generally receive training and are exposed to principles. It is thus critical to focus attention on mainstreaming gender equality issues to allow for equal representation of women and men leaders. And the third aspect, economy. According to the World Bank, by eliminating discrimination against female workers and managers, managers could significantly increase productivity per worker by 25 to 40%. This means unlocking the potential of women by narrowing the gender gap could lead to a great rise in incomes per capita throughout all Asian economies. And the talent and skills of women can be deployed more efficiently and in our globalized world today, this is a competitive edge that is more important than ever. All of this underscores my primary point. When we liberate the economic potential of women, we elevate the economic performance of communities, nations, Asians, and the world. And the last aspect, politics. We need a better understanding of all levels of dynamics that sustain and or create greater inequalities, build political networks for women in local government, encourage greater participation of women in electoral processes, develop a global partnership for development, engage from all communities to combine existing knowledge on best practice. This gender action program should work to strengthen women's leadership skills to attain elected and appointed positions in public office and train women's groups in advocacy and mobilization to advance their key issues and to hold government accountable. And here, this is our conclusion. By using gender action program, we can boost global competitiveness potential of Asia, and all communities should cooperate each other, like governments, businesses, civil society, academia, media, and we can improve our policies through the salary gap, promote work-life balance, best practice exchange, partnerships, and collective problem solving. We can make it, and what we want to say is women save Asia. And these are our references, and this is all our presentation. Thank you for listening. Bye.